Well, this is an environment where we know the next president of the United States is going to be offering a lot of stimulus. We'll get the details later tonight when Joe Biden outlines what it's expected to be. Uh, $2 trillion in extra spending that will include the likes of $2,000 uh, know, checks, uh, virus stimulus checks, if you will. Uh, also, higher jobless benefits from the $300 a week that was just passed by Congress a few weeks ago, maybe make it $600, maybe extend it from 10 weeks to 20 weeks. A lot of details here, but a lot of money as well. Liz Peake, the Fox News contribute extraordinaire. Gary Kalpam with us as well, just extraordinary on so many levels. Gary, end it with you. Then let me begin with you on the markets just finding. Uh, oh, I apologize, Gary's not there. Uh, hope he comes back. But Liz, let me ask you what I was going to ask this notion that the markets like. Uh, probably what the Federal Reserve Chairman is saying, uh, and they like what a Democratic incoming president will be doing because it's it's going to stimulate, and they like stimulus. What do you think? Yeah, uh, look, the market basically prices stocks on future expected earnings, and this incredible flood of stimulus spending combined with uber low interest rates means a lot of industries are going to do very well. Uh, we've seen that during uh, 2020, that, that some sectors of the economy really boomed, while others that were under lockdown did not. But, Neil, everyone is uh, optimistic that this rush of uh, new spending is going to be very good for the market. I do think at some point people are going to stop and say, wait a minute, this is not organic growth. We've got to go back to opening up the economy. The vaccine has to get out. We have to have real demand creating, uh, you know, a, a vibrant growing economy, just throwing more money into people's savings accounts, which is what happened last year and could happen again, right. is not, uh, right. you know, I think it's a sugar rush and it won't last forever. There's nothing wrong with sugar rushes, young lady, just because you're thin and fit. <laughs> don't dismiss them. Uh, but let me ask you about, you know, we just got word that the U.S. budget gap rose about 61 percent in the October to December quarter. So we're at $573 billion for a quarter. For the year, a, a deficit total debt of $3.3 trillion. That $3.3 trillion added yeah. to our national debt. That, that, that is for one year. Uh, is anyone... Looking at these numbers, <laughs> I generally am of the age now that it's not going to have to be my immediate worry, my kids' worry, but, but I can deal with that. They're just not going to be able to. Is anyone worrying about this stuff? I think we're going to start hearing those worries voiced by Republicans in Congress. And I have to say, they're standing on pretty shaky legs, considering that they've been behind uh, and enthusiastic about most of this spending. But yes, I think we will begin to hear about these deficits and the debt of this country. Uh, these are unprecedented numbers, uh, Neil. And the fact that now they're being backed up by so-called modern monetary theory, which I think is absolute hogwash, you cannot indefinitely spend not only more than you have coming in, but way more than you have coming in. There will be a day of reckoning. I have no idea when or how, but I think we have to begin to imagine cutting back on this flow of government uh, you know, spending. And I don't think Biden is at all interested in doing that. We're talking about a $2 trillion stimulus package and then another trillion dollar infrastructure bill. Holy crow, when does it end? Yeah, you know, the, the thinking is that it leads to a boom, you get growth, that can eradicate a lot of problems. That was what helped Bill Clinton with the internet boom and the technology boom, and that provided untold revenues to Uncle Sam, but barring that, and I don't see that, but again, who knows? Um, it's gonna, it's gonna be dicey, right? Well, I, I think that you know, at some point, people are going to begin to imagine, and a, a taper tantrum will take place because people are going to start to think that the Fed's going to be less accommodative, and I think we're going to start seeing. Uh, some voices raised about paring back budgets. And look, I mean, uh, there's no question the economy is in trouble, but much of it is because of government shutdowns, because New York and California have suppressed activity in so many sectors of those states and many other states as well. And I get it. They're very concerned, those governors, about COVID. But the lockdowns don't appear to be having much effect. And meanwhile, Hundreds of thousands of businesses are going under. Wouldn't it be better to maybe 
open up those economies uh, and and hope and and also push out the vaccine as quickly as possible and get those companies hiring again. That's the big problem here. Yeah, and that's what's going on in Florida. So they must be doing something right. Um, Got it. Always a pleasure, Liz. Thank you very very much, Liz Peak.